What's up everybody? Tom here with another video. In today's video, we'll be talking about everything to do with the stock market, including why this level and this level are the most important to have in your charts this week. We'll also be going through a deep dive of our technical analysis for the S&P 500, NASDAQ, Bitcoin, Tesla, and more, because right now we are seeing a rotation occurring that I think a lot of you should be paying attention to. Heaps to go through. This one's going to be good. Stay tuned, guys. So what any investor or trader should be doing is having a look at where their positions are in the markets. And of course, one of the ways to figure out which sectors are rotating in and out of is to have a look at a heat map of the S&P 500 large companies. Here we'll see yesterday that it was all about big tech. In fact, things like Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft and Apple really stood out in terms of returns for the day. Apple, particularly ahead of that March 23rd event, as we suspected, did have a very, very strong session. And I might consider that to continue through the start of tomorrow. Pretty strong numbers there. And you can see why when we take a look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ up 1.82%, was even higher at one point during the day. S&P 500, pretty decent, 0.75% up. And the Russell actually down 0.75. So a bit of a smattering all over the place. Why was this? Well, I think it's because tech sector really led the day at a 1.75% return and energy and financials, the two value sectors, did return pretty poorly with utilities also being down 0.88%. It's just not the time for utilities just yet, but it will become the time in the future. Let's get right into our technical analysis. I think there's so much to go through today that's so important to your stock market trades and your stock market investments. The first one is the volatility index, the VIX for the S&P 500 is actually now underneath 20. So it looks like the market is stabilizing. The fear is leaving the market after that last little corrective phase that we got where the NASDAQ of course returned around 15%. And it looks like this 18.9 is our first real significant portion here underneath the 20. Have a look at this daily. We've gone lower, but then we instantly rebounded. Yesterday, we really solidified that we were underneath the 20 on the volatility index. So will it be back down to the 15s and 14s? Well, that'll all come down to the price action. But certainly the first time since this entire pandemic began and the crisis began that we have returned to what you would say normal volatility is in the markets dollar index what's going on there another rejection of our key area of 9196 look at this daily close very weak looking daily close pin bar rejection or shooting star as many people will know it as we're still trapped within the area of 9135 and 9196 and i think having both of those on your charts if you're trading anything to do with risk on risk off sentiment or dollar pairs is going to be important because the breakout above or a breakout below is going to signal the next level for the US dollar. US Treasury yields, 10 years, what's going on? Well, it put pressure on the downside yesterday, so we weren't anywhere near that 1.75. We were trading mostly around 1.67, and we ended at a 1.689 Treasury yield level. If we go out to the daily, you'll see I'm not too concerned about this trend so far. I do think that it could have a hiccup here and move down a little bit. But I'm not really too concerned about 10-year treasuries until they breach 1.95 or 2. I think this is just a relatively normal retracement after what was an incredible shock. It's a retracement back to normality, which happened at the GFC, and it happens during every single crash. And it usually is quite fast, followed by a whole bunch of boring kind of coiling levels after that, or even gradual declines. BTC, another one. What is going on here? Well, US Treasuries and dollar index, I'm not even sure if that's what's affecting it. I think it's more of a seasonal thing. Look, Bitcoin usually returns pretty poorly throughout March. And at this point, if you actually look at our March return, we would be up. So that's, that's unusual when you look at it over time. We're now still March 23rd, but look here. I'm starting to put together probably a bigger time frame analysis here on the four hour. The problem is it's been very hard to read on the smaller time frames in all of this chop, but it looks like the 54,000 is acting as some form of support. We might actually see it bounce up, hit resistance, come back down, bounce up, hit resistance. And then at this point, when it gets to the last third of a descending triangle, if that is the channel pattern, if that is the pattern that we end up seeing, then it could break through and really be in for some significant pain. 
If it does break to the upside though here, of course, we're going back to crack new, new all-time highs. So 62,000 will be broken, you would think, if it gets through something like this because that's just such a significant wind-up that both ways are playable on a descending or ascending triangle. In fact, they're one of the best patterns you can look for in the markets, but I would like to have one more touch up here and then a respect of the support before we can really move ahead with thinking this is exactly the type of pattern we're doing. For now, horizontal support, 54,000 around there is important. It needs to hold here and it cannot close below because if it closes below, it exposes 52,000 or potentially even back into the 40s, which would be quite scary for many people. Gold, another one that's very tough to trade right now from a technical perspective. You'll see here, this trend line is the only thing that I have set up and it's just because it's been such a good little level, but there are some things that are making me think that gold could be shorting here. And the reason why is because it continuously fails to make higher highs. It's not really doing the sequence that you would want it to do. And in fact, it looks like it's kind of trapping itself between these resistance peaks and these troughs, these higher troughs that are coming through. So gold is trapped, silver looks weak, there's just no clear direction for traders out there. I mean, do you really want to be trading in this? That looks like Chop City to me. And Chop City is not an area I like to be in as a trader or an investor. Chop City sucks. On to Tesla. What's going on here? Well, Tesla was interesting because it was all about hype from the Kathy Wood call of $3,000 for Tesla. That sent everyone into a bit of fever at the beginning. And then it moved up actually through the session while near the end of the session did decline somewhat. We have, of course, the left shoulder over here. We have the head. We have the right shoulder that's in place for now. So inverse head and shoulder still in play and we're still in the area where we expect consolidation of the right shoulder. But I'll go into the 15 minute chart and I just wanna show you why you need to understand your key levels when you're trading this. So a few people said to me yesterday during the live stream, Tom, what are your thoughts for Tesla today? And I instantly said, well, look, 720 is our main resistance moving forward, but 700 around there would be the top of the session because it was just so explosive at the start. We actually opened here. Pre-market, we were only up at around this level here, actually, at the open. So it really moved very, very heavily throughout the session. It hit 700 and it was just unable to keep all those daily people's gains. I mean, people that had bought in at the start, they were looking for quick gains. People that bought in the pre-market, they were looking for gains. And then a lot of people would just be like 700 bucks, I'm happy with that. So that round number did hold. And I don't know if you need to be concerned about Tesla, but it does certainly suck that it pulled back so significantly near the close of the session. Look at that sell-off in the last kind of 45 minutes of trade. Pretty significant sell-off. And that tells me that mostly day traders and speculators were getting out of their position, ready to get into it the next day. Tesla, I think, is becoming a bit of a day trade. And I think you can see that by the market and how it reacts near the close and how it really trades through the sessions. Resistance 700 hit. Now, will we return back to the 660 to have more people picking it up? Let's find out in tomorrow's session. Remember, join us live if you're interested in finding out more about how we interpret these charts during the pre-market into market open. AMC GME traders, ooh, it's not looking the best. I've got to be <laughs> perfectly clear here. I'm not liking these technicals. Yesterday, we got a daily close underneath the 200. That is not ideal considering we have not actually done that through the session. 173 remains this area where if it closes below there, I do think it's over for this particular phase of the short squeeze and you'll return back into that 180 plus kind of brackets. AMC on the right hand side, oh, I'm not sure about this one either. $12 was reached, which I expected yesterday and I expected buy pressure off that, but it really needs to show that it can hold above 12 and that it can move back towards the 14. A closure on the daily above 14 will signal 16 and the squeeze is firmly back on. But yeah, 12 has to hold through the sessions and you, you need to now go actually to the daily timeframes to get confirmations either way on things like GME and things like AMC. They're just not gonna give you those five minute, 15 minute signals as good as they were back a few weeks ago. We're at critical points for both and sentiment must hold in Tuesday's session. If it doesn't, it's just not good enough where it is. 
And I'm sorry to tell you that, but yeah, those, those technicals not looking so good. Let's have a look here at the resistance of the NASDAQ. So the good news for the rest of the market is the technicals are looking really good. <laughs> and I mean, nice. So we have our left shoulder, we have our head, we have our right shoulder, and they are firmly in place for this idea that we've been talking about now for a couple of weeks. The formation is coming through. 13,000 plus break close yesterday. At the time of this recording, we're at 13,084 in the futures, and we move towards now the 13,300. We put pressure on this zone. When we put pressure on this, and if we break this, I've talked to you guys about it before, 13.6 becomes our next target. And then after that, I think we go to all time highs on the NASDAQ. So it's a beautiful formation. Inverse head and shoulders are just such a great pattern if they can work out because in the market, inherently it is long over short. So if you're getting an inverse head and shoulders, I'll always take an inverse head and shoulders over head and shoulders any day in any blue chip stock and especially in an index. So if we get through, it's actually causing calling a massive move to around 14,400. It's just so significant, this pattern. And I'll certainly be talking about this more. We need it to hold up for the bears. Look, the good news for you is if you can push it back down underneath 12,000, probably about 12,700, you will trigger a huge amount of shorting and that will pressure 12,300. But in between here, it looks like firm control is in play for the bulls in this particular time in the market. US 100, this is the futures. You'll see it's playing very, very similar kind of concept and style, 13,300, still the key resistance there. SPX, well, the good news is for bulls is the long leg doji, which we know is an indecision candle on the daily, has now been closed up against. And that's again signaling we have made a decision. Long leg doji, indecision, Close above long leg doji, decision made. I would expect the S&P 500 to move now towards the 4,000, but I don't think it'll be driven by the value sector. I think it's mostly gonna be driven by the tech sector and what was driving it through most of this crisis period and crisis recovery. Keep your trend line on there because this will be something that we will return to multiple times if this market does continue to run up. 4,000, maybe 80, 4,100 could be where we reach next before we hit the trend line. If that is what's going to occur, then we'll be, of course, following it through. Just remember this 20 moving average is a super important hold as well from a long leg doji with a decision made because check out this. This time, this time, this time, this time, this time, it's a very solid exponential moving average hold. And that is what all those candles were telling us yesterday. So guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe and hit that like button. We'll be coming at you with live content Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all the way through the pre-market, two and a half hours early. And we will also be doing our usual video recaps talking about the market, such as this one. It's been great support recently and thanks so much for making 50,000. Here's to 100,000. I hope we can get there together. Bye for now.